Welcome to Factorio for Dummies Part 4. My name's Valerian, and in this video, we are going to teach you a good furnace setup that will serve you throughout the game. In the last video, we built a steam power plant and went over the basics of electrical power. Now that we've expanded our power plant, we can now expand our production. See, this current setup we have here for iron plates is not going to be enough for what we want to do from here on out. So we are going to tear this down and make a much better setup. To get started, first place a belt down. Make sure you have enough space, but like, uh, right here. Then place the belt on both sides parallel, six spaces away like this. One, two, three, four, five, six. Place. One, two, three, four, five, six. Place. You want five spaces in between each belt. So one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Now lay down three lines of belts out from the first three belts like this. So. Now it's gonna end up being longer than this, but that's okay. So we've made three lines of belts. Now let's make one belt pointed towards one of the outer belts like this. Now do that nine times on each side belt. Don't touch the middle belt. So don't touch this belt right here. Just go two spaces, place, two spaces, place, 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 and then six, seven, eight, nine. Stretch the length of the belt as necessary like this. So go ahead and do the same thing at the bottom belt as well. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Then stretch this belt as well. Like this. Okay. Now we're going to finish this design like this. So. And go up the middle, right about here. Now that we're done, I highly recommend that you blueprint this design. So I'm going to go ahead and throw my, dis my blueprint away, but I'm going to make another blueprint again. I already have the save, but I'll save it again just to show you how to do it. So first you click the blueprint library button, you click new blueprint right here. Then you click and drag. Make sure you get everything you want to save in there. Then you click the pen mark and you, you uh, type in what you want to name the blueprint. You can also change some icons to reflect what you want to do with it. Once you're done, make sure you hit the save label first, the little pen mark again, before you uh, hit the create blueprint button. If you do that before you save it, then it won't keep the name. Click create blueprint. Don't press any other button. Move the mouse over to blueprint library and click it. And then you can either click in a gray spot within the gray box here. As you can see, I have a lot of blueprints. Uh, we're just gonna put it in the early game one, so left click on where you want it to go. And if you wanna delete a blueprint, you just right click to open it up and you click the delete blueprint button and it disappears. So now we'll be able to place it later and don't have to guess if the design will fit in the space that we want it to. So if I wanted to throw it over here for this copper, which I'm going to do, I'll just basically go to the blueprint and bam, rotate it however you want, and it's there available for me. Uh, the reason I have it like this, and the reason I encourage you to, to build this is because basically we're getting it right the first time. With this setup, we can upgrade to the highest level of furnaces, which are bigger than the lowest tier of furnaces. The first furnaces that you start out with, they're like, uh, they're like this, they're two by two, okay? Now I don't have an electric furnace with me, but it's three by three, and it's so, you'll need, to get rid of these and basically fit the three by three in here, as you can see, uh, and the three by threes fit perfectly in here with, with one inserter space between. So one space, electric furnace, one space, and then the middle belt. So it's that's why it's designed this way. So it can grow and 
in Endgame, and you can carry this all the way to Endgame if you don't tear it down, and you or you don't want to tear it down, you don't have to. You can just upgrade to electric furnaces and put some modules in them. So anyway, that's a long-winded explanation of why I have this the way I have it. This is not by all means the absolute best way to do things, but it's a pretty effective way, and it's served me well throughout all my games, and I've seen other people use it as well. So, however, say we don't have a lot of space and we wanted to make this shorter, as long as you have the next tier of electric pole, uh, the steel electric poles, you can scrunch these together and make them side by side. Now, we're not going to use all 18 furnace spots right now. We don't have enough miners for that. Generally, if you place a miner down for every furnace you have, you should be all right. Later on, when you upgrade your furnaces, you will need more than a one miner to one furnace ratio. So if I have 10 furnaces here total, then I'm going to need 10 miners on the field here next to it. Say these, these furnaces were smelting iron and there's 10 of them, then I'm going to need 10 miners to match that. So let's place our furnaces down like this. Now I'm going to set up the inserters on one of our furnaces. Now do it for the rest of the furnaces like so. We're going to go ahead and... Uh, Make sure all inserters in the setup are faced towards the middle of the belt. So the thick yellow line on the inserter right here, this thick yellow line is facing towards this middle belt here. So again, we have these belts pointed towards the outside belts here, so we can upgrade this to 3x3 electric furnaces later. And I'll go ahead and show you uh, what I'm talking about real quick here, just to reiterate it. See, there you have it right here. Now, these are hooked up to robots, but don't let that fool you. This was originally just about similar design. The only difference here is that instead I use a splitter to distribute the resources instead of just one belt, just two belts smashed into one. It, it still operates the same. You can see how these three by three electric furnaces, the inserter takes the space that the belt would normally take. This is what you want to evolve the setup into right here eventually, and you'll get beacons later on. Is this the absolute best, most optimal end game way to do it? Probably not, but it's definitely effective, I'll tell you that, especially when you hook it up to robots. I've got about eight of these here, and they're doing just fine. I've launched about 135 rockets. I mean, I'm, like I said, I'm I'm not, I'm not the grandfather of Factorio or anything, so, but I like to help people, and if what I say here helps make your game a little better, then I've done my job. So like I said, this setup will serve you into end game. You're just gonna have to upgrade a little bit and make a few tweaks, but this design, this, this belt setup will serve you all the way to end game. This way you won't have to tear this all down later so you can simply remove the extra belts here and upgrade for now just place things the way shown and don't worry about anything else now for power poles we need to provide the inserters with power so place your power poles ideally with each power pole in between each plane furnace like this gonna connect it here and then right in the middle get the get the blue field covering each inserter just like that and you can pretty much place one, skip a space, and place one, skip a space. That's kind of the pattern. Okay, now we're going to connect resources to the middle belt. This will feed the furnaces with coal and iron so they can put iron plates on the outer belts. You will need a splitter to split your coal from the main coal belt and divert some of it to the furnace setup. Like this. Right over here use an underground belt. I show you how to use those in the last video. And then bring it over like this. Take the take the iron ore off there. And just gonna measure this straight down. Put another underground belt. And right there, here comes the coal. See, I've got one half of the belt full of coal and the other half of the belt empty, which is soon to be full of iron. By pinching two belts into one belt like this, we can have two different products on the same belt. This way we get coal and iron ore on one belt. No long-handed inserters or hand filling required. See how the iron ore is staying on one half of the belt while the coal is on the other half without getting mixed up? That's the way you do it.
just like this and you can do this with just about any product it doesn't have to be only it's not only with coal or iron you can do this with anything now notice how only four or five furnaces are running this is because we only have four miners our furnace setup has 10 furnaces so we will need to place six more miners to get one miner for each furnace so let's do that now go ahead and grab the miners here probably going to want miners on your tool belt probably throughout the rest of the game Okay, there's six. Point some belts into the side of the belt there so we can place our power poles in here. That's how I like to do things. And, okay. There, now all furnaces should start running. So we got six. Back to four, but soon, soon it's gonna, yeah. Here comes the surplus of iron. All, all of them should start running. So now we'll stretch this belt out here. Now we have a belt full of iron plates. Voila, isn't that excellent? Remember to blueprint the setup so you can measure how much space you will need to build this. You can build this setup for copper ore to make copper plates and iron plates to make steel or stone to make stone brick. Also, if we wanted to increase our output, say we we're not producing enough plates, then we can simply add more furnaces and miners to the setup like so. There we go. So this, this is a constantly evolving setup, which is what I like about it the most. It really just meets your needs wherever you are. So let's say we just just gonna add a couple more. Nothing too fancy. And we just add another miner or electricity. Set this up here. Logically, we would want to do this with copper after we make this, but I'll leave that to you to build on your own using what you have learned here. In part five, we're going to work on green packs or logistic science pack production. If part five is not out yet, go ahead and subscribe and hit notifications to know when I upload it. By the way, I have a Twitch channel. Stop by and say hello sometime. We also have a Discord and we are active. Come join House Valerian. If you want to support my work, I have a Patreon page. Go ahead and check it out. Links in the description below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.